Good afternoon. I'm Tom Butcher, and uh, I'm here this afternoon physically with Jennifer Mizrahi uh, of the Respectability, amongst other things, initiatives. So, um, Jennifer, welcome. Really good to have you next to me. Um, what I would love is if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and the Respectability Project first, and then we can dive in on our discussion. Fabulous. Uh, I am so thrilled to be at the Zero Conference here at the United Nations. Respectability is a nonprofit organization that is led by people with disabilities. I myself am dyslexic and have ADHD, but most of our team are people who are self-advocates with disabilities, and we're fighting stigmas and advancing opportunities for people with disabilities. That's primarily working with Hollywood on different films and productions to really change the narrative around people with disabilities, working to find the policies and practices that are really successful and get them replicated, and then, of course, advancing opportunities for self-advocates themselves so the disability movement and so many other movements can be led by talented people with disabilities. Great. Thank you very much indeed, Jennifer. Well, as most of you will know, both virtually and those in person here, um, we are a large variety of both cultures and countries here. And I just wondered, working as you do, do you think that there are, as it were, archetypal rules and tips that um, you think would work um, to help people with disabilities everywhere? Absolutely. I think one of the main prom problems or challenges in the disability movement is that we're frequently doing things right, but we're not necessarily doing the right things. That we have to ask ourselves what's really going to move the needle. And high expectations and changing the conversation about what people with disabilities can do and how we can contribute to making the world a better place is core critical. So number one, no matter what country or culture you're in, fighting the stigmas and low expectations. The second thing is no matter where you are, no matter what your disability is, there's push through the barriers and to succeed. So find those things that work don't necessarily reinvent the world, the, 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 the rule. Just try and replicate what works best and learn from others as we're doing here at this conference at the United Nations. And of course, proximity of being with people with disabilities, it lets you know the actual challenges and the solutions that really work. So listening to the real experience of people with disabilities themselves, putting those people at the forefront of the movement is core critical. Great. Thank you very much indeed for those wise words. Um, you're enviable. You've started a number of successful nonprofits, raised millions of dollars, and managed really to get a lot of things changed. How can other people do the same? I think one of the problems that the disability movement has is that we rely on pity. Oh, look how terrible the situation is for us. Give us a hand out. It, we really need to change the conversation. People want to see that it's a hand up that we want, not only so we can lift ourselves out of poverty through education, skills, and employment, but so that we can bring our talents to help make the world a better place. Look at Greta Thunberg, who has autism at the forefront of the climate change movement. Look at Elon Musk, who is really working on, on battery technology and on so many different things with solar and other things. There's so many people with disabilities that are making the world a better place through innovation. It's changing the conversation, using smart strategies. That means specific, measurable, actionable, time uh, limited, you know, really smart strategies where we're holding ourselves accountable for progress. We have to stop complaining. We have to stop using the oppression Olympics while we show how pitiful our situation is. And we have to instead show what we can do to make the world a better place. And then people will put in their money, they will partner with us, and they will really lock arms to create a better future for everyone. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I, it's really important, this whole issue of, of, of um, cooperation, collaboration, um, and sharing. Um, one of my things is, you know, why reinvent the wheel? There's probably someone out there who's trying to do it. And if you put the two of you together, or the three or the four, it's going to be 
eight times as strong. Um, as we all know, there have been some major changes over these last couple of years, not only because of the pandemic, but also there have been some pretty big systemic changes in society, um, which have brought about some paradigm shifts. Um, what do you think the main trends are now for you that are going to impact um, people with disabilities going forward? Not only positively, but al also negatively. And in the latter instance, um, how can we address them? Well, one of the biggest changes has been the move to remote work. It used to be that people with disabilities would say, hey, I'm blind and so it's hard for me to, to drive, but I could work very well from home, or I have epilepsy so I don't drive, or I have a mental health condition and I need to visit um, with my psychiatrist on a regular basis, can I work from home? And the employers would say, no, how could people possibly work productively from home? And now with this new paradigm because of the pandemic, so many people started to work from home. At the beginning of the pandemic in the United States, a million people with disabilities lost their jobs, one million. But all of those jobs in terms of numbers have now been regained. We now have the highest employment rate in the history of America for people with disabilities. And a lot of it is the combination of remote work and the dramatic breakthroughs in assistive technology, Google and Microsoft and the other companies that have brought a speech to text and text to speech and so many innovations. That is paradigm shifting, particularly for knowledge workers with disabilities who are getting those family sustaining jobs where they can really have a better future. Great. Thanks so much. I'd, I'd like to pick up just on, on, on one thing there. Um, Yes, the, the, the figures have gone up for employment, not least because of um, remote work. But um, I have seen over the years uh, and discussed with a lot of people that one, one of the challenges is actually persons with disabilities being included in a physical workplace with other people so that everybody is working together. So would you say that there were kind of pros and cons of remote work? Yes its work, but um, there isn't that kind of camaraderie that would have existed as if it was in an office with suitable accommodations. You, you bring a really important point up. There's been a lot of studies that show that one of the best ways to reduce stigmas is for people to actually go to school with or work with people with disabilities. One of the things that we've been doing at Respectability is to put people with disabilities on screen. So we've worked on over 300 different productions, working with Disney, working with Warner Media, Netflix, and others, because what we have found is that people spend more time watching entertainment media on screen today than, than at work in many cases. They spend on average in the United States six hours a day on screens. So if they see somebody in a TV series like Born This Way or Born for Business, or if they see a superhero in a Marvel movie, or they see a cartoon uh, where people are using, animals are using uh, sign language, um, it normalizes disability. So yes, the in-person work environment is important, but even the on-screen work environment can be very important. And we're working to get people with disabilities working inside Hollywood, primarily as screenwriters, as camera people, stagers, actors, every aspect, so you have authentic representation throughout. Great. Thanks so much. Um, and we've, that's a challenge. We've looked at the positive aspects um, of these other paradigm shifts. Where do you think we're going to see the greatest challenges coming going forward? There are so many different challenges going forward. One of the biggest challenges is that people with non-visible disabilities still have so much shame or stigma around their disabilities that they're not self-disclosing. So somebody who might have a learning disability or mental health condition, if they're not coming public, then people don't see that they might need an accommodation. They're not asking for their accommodation from their human resources person. They're not letting people know what their situation 
situation is. But we've seen in sports some of the best athletes in the world talking about mental health, for example. Some of these positive role models are really making paradigm shifts in the conversation and making people feel more comfortable to be a part of the disability community. Great. Thank you very much. And we've only got a few minutes left, but I'm going to ask you a very personal question, which is, of all the initiatives, projects you've put together, which do you, or of which are you most proud? Absolutely, the most important thing I've been able to do is to create apprenticeship programs for diverse young people with disabilities. Because the next generation, people who got to go to an inclusive school, people who have high expectations from themselves, they're going to break barriers that are completely unprecedented. Particularly people with intersectional identities, people of color, people from the LGBTQ community, more women with disabilities. The future is these young leaders and seeing how brave and bold and badass they are. I can't wait to see what they're going to bring for the future. Great. Jennifer, with those absolutely stirring words, I would like to thank you enormously, personally, for the project and for everybody for joining me today. Thank you so much. And thank you for the listeners. Oh, except we do have something special. Please stay on the line. All right, um, very exciting uh, NPO we heard about, respectability and everything else you have brought to life. Uh, respectability uh, is a nonprofit organization based in the United States. And um, I drew Hollywood right on top because that's what came to my ears first. How do you change perspectives? How do you change pictures of people with disabilities in public? Well, you talk to the screenwriters and to directors to bring people with disabilities into movies. So they become role models for other people with disabilities and young, dynamic, badass leaders um, who will take over the world, hopefully soon. <laughs> um, how do you do your work? Uh, you listen to the people with disabilities, make them part of the team. You also said we should stop complaining, going out of this pity hole of I have a disability and please help me into we are powerful, we are one world for everyone and we all belong together. Um, we were also, you were also asked uh, what were the changes within the last couple of years, not only uh, due to the pandemic, and yes, the pandemic was a changing um, thing. First, everybody lost their jobs, but due to the fact that remote work is possible, people with disabilities came into jobs. Technology is changing. We have speech to text to speech technologies right now. Um, and there's a big paradigm shift going on right now. Uh, last but not least, one thing. Um, we heard that we can reduce stigma, and that's like worldwide known, by contact. Now the question was, what if we don't have contact? Here again, we bring people to the screens, and so we bring people into contact, and that's how we can reduce stigma and bring, make the world a better place. I think that was the word you were using. Thank you. Thank you very much, and I must apologize. It's just a matter of age that I forgot the icing on the wonderful cake. Thank you very much, and goodbye, everybody.